Recently, a new moon of Jupiter, S2003 J24, was discovered by an amateur astronomer, armed with nothing but a laptop and a whole lot of determination. I spoke to said astronomer, who wishes to go by the name Kai, about their amazing discovery and how they found the moon. So without further ado, here's how you can find a moon from the comfort of your own home. Buckle up though, it's gonna get complicated. So, first things first, you need to get images of the skies around a planet. But not just any images, I'm talking about some real specialised wide field photos. What you'll need are several photos of the same bit of sky, taken on the same night, over several hours. This is because the stars in the photo will remain stationary, and any moons captured in the images will move between the stars. Thankfully, there's a whole lot of photos just like this, and they're all available to the public. Back in 2003, astronomers began a truly ambitious project to search the skies around Jupiter and Saturn for tiny moons using the telescopes at the Mauna Kea Observatory. Their hard work paid off, and in the first batch of results they found 23 new moons around Jupiter. The images taken by these telescopes are all available to the public and are stored in archives managed by the various astronomy groups, one of which is the Canadian Astronomy Data Centre which has a less than friendly user interface, but it's the one that Kai recommends and it's got a lot of images. Now you can't just type Jupiter into the search form and expect it to pop out a bunch of images of the sky around it. You need to know when these images were taken and exactly which bit of the Jovian sky is in the photo, because the sky around Jupiter is pretty big yo. What you can do is search for papers about new moon discoveries and that should list when these photos were taken. Pro tip from Kai, during their search, Kai used the CFHT Science Archive, there's a link to it in the description, to map out which bits of the Jovian sky were photographed and then plot the positions of the known moons of Jupiter onto the map. Kai noticed the areas closer to Jupiter were fairly moon-free, and so began searching there. So when you know what images you need to get, download the files, and make sure you've got plenty of hard drive space because a single image can be upwards of 300 megabytes. Oof. Now these images are in a file format known as .fits, which can be opened using an incredible free-to-download tool called the Aladdin Sky Atlas. Again, link in the description. This is where the moon hunting begins, within these colossal images. It will take a lot of time, and a lot of patience. You'll probably find yourself at 2am, flickering between images, playing with the contrast, going, hmm, is this a moon? Is it background noise? Oh, I'm so tired. But persist, and you just might find a moon. Pro tip from Kai, ideal moon candidates, they move quite slowly, so if you see something fast moving, it's probably an asteroid. Now when you think you've found a moon, you need to measure its position from Jupiter. Hold on, why do I need to do that? This is so, one, you can figure out if you've found a moon that's already been discovered, and two, get a rough idea of the orbit of the moon, which you're going to need to know if you want to confirm the moon. What? <laughs> so, to prove you've found a moon and not just some random asteroid, you need to find the moon in other photos taken on other nights. And here's the real kicker, sometimes a photo just wasn't taken in the bit of sky on the night that the moon should be in. But, if you find a moon in an image taken on another night, this proves that the moon is bound to the parent planet, in this case Jupiter, and also allows you to calculate the orbit, thus confirming the moon. For example, Kai first spotted J24 in images taken on the 24th of Feb. Using the initial orbit calculated in Find Orb, another free and real handy tool, but one that's not the easiest to use, yes there is a link to it in the description, Kai could then get a rough idea of where the moon will be, and more importantly, when. Kai then browsed the solar system object image search to see if there were any images of the bit of sky that the moon would be in, and thankfully, there were, with the moon appearing in images taken on the 5th, 6th, 25th and 27th of February. After even more diligent moon hunting, made all the harder from the bright glare of Jupiter, Kai managed to find J24 in all of these images, thus proving the moon belongs to Jupiter. Oh my days. So say I do all this and find a moon, what do I do then? Who do I speak to? Well, once you've calculated the orbit of the moon, ideally over the course of a month and with an uncertainty less than 10, send the results and a bunch of other details in a rigorously structured email to the Minor Planet Center. They will check your findings, and if they agree with you, ta-da! You found a moon! Do I get to name the moon if I discover it? Perhaps, if you follow the naming rules of the IAU. There are rules. Alas, there are rules. And in the case of Jupiter, the moon must be named after a character from Greek or Roman mythology who was a lover and or descendant of either Zeus or Jupiter. Thankfully, there are loads of them, because huh, these boys got around. And because you'll probably find an irregular moon, the name you suggest must end in the letter A or O for prograde moons and the letter E for retrograde moons. 
Prograde means the moon orbits in the same direction as the parent planet's rotation, and retrograde moons orbit in the opposite direction. In the case of S2003 J24, it is a retrograde moon, and one that also belongs to the Kame group. So, a valid moon name suggestion would be Milie, the daughter of Zeus and Chaldini. Now, there's already a moon in the Kame group called Chaldini, and I think it would be real sweet for Milie and Chaldini to have a family reunion. So, that's how you find a moon. Grab a laptop, get a coffee, and go spot some moons.